You worked around the clock to make this facility a success. And today then, this city is home to one of the largest solar panel factories in all of the United States. And equally significant, the panels being produced here are some of the best in the world. Yes. And so President Joe Biden and I know this is just the beginning. Dalton, we see what you have accomplished. And we see the path that you've laid. We see a future with more jobs, more factories, and more opportunity. And we are fighting with you to make that vision real. Since taking office, our administration has made the largest investment in solar energy in our nation's history. We strengthened domestic, domestic supply chains to make sure America has reliable access to parts and material to build a clean energy technology and economy. We provided tax credits to encourage companies to buy solar panels made in America. And we invested billions more to build and expand factories like this one. And because of all this work earlier this year, QCells announced they would invest two and a half billion dollars to build a solar facility next door in Cartersville, to triple the size of this factory, and to create 2,500 more jobs right here in Georgia. And what kind of jobs are we talking about? We're talking about the jobs that are the skills that are required to be a technician, an engineer, an IT specialist, a, a data analyst. Jobs that give folks the opportunity to grow and advance right here in the community. And jobs that help our nation fight the climate crisis. So today I am proud to announce that QCells has received a new order for two and a half million solar panels. Hello friends. I have good news to share with you this evening. New relief plans have been passed and millions of low income households will qualify for additional benefits every month. SNAP benefits are set to go out to eligible Americans this week, but Republicans want to make a big change that may lead to less people qualifying for benefits. My dearest friends, please do me a big favor and watch until the end of this video. Also, tomorrow, I will be announcing three winners for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you'd like to enter these weekly giveaways, all you have to do, dear friends, is click in like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. Republican leaders are now pressing to tighten work requirements for food stamps and other government assistance programs as a way to slash federal spending. Any cuts that Republicans suggest will instantly be criticized by Democrats, leaving the GOP party toiling to cobble together a budget plan that can win the support of all Republicans. With a razor-thin majority and Democrats solidly opposed to spending cuts on the scale that they are demanding, Republicans cannot afford any more opposition in their own ranks if they plan to pass a fiscal plan. They have already ruled out reductions to Medicare and Social Security. Top House Republicans have made increasing work requirements for SNAP participants in the SNAP program. One of the central elements of whatever spending blueprint they will ultimately release. Republicans have framed it as a straightforward way to curtail what they believe is the nation's out of control spending. 
arguing that would also lift Americans out of poverty. Republicans may soon be forced to put the matter to a vote. Speaker Kevin McCarthy told reporters last week that House Republicans could soon move on legislation modeled on a letter that he sent to President Biden last month. The letter outlined spending cuts, including strengthening work requirements for those without dependents who can work. Representative Dusty Johnson of South Dakota earlier this year introduced legislation that would make able-bodied adults without dependents subject to work requirements until they are 65 years old, raising the current age from 49. The bill would substantially narrow an exemption from work requirements for some people in households with younger children than 18 years old, excusing only those whose households include children younger than seven. The additional federal funding for SNAP program ended on March 31st, and now SNAP benefits have returned to the standard amount. The additional funding, which began spring of 2020, was meant to help individuals who were out of jobs and struggling with income during the crisis. But as of today, millions of U.S. households are still struggling to put food on the table, especially with the rising costs of goods and services. On average, U.S. households will receive at least $95 a month. Some households who are under regular SNAP rules receive low benefits because they have somewhat higher but still modest incomes. They will have their benefits reduced by $250 a month or more. So far, the West Virginia Department of Health and Human Services will be able to issue extra benefits through the summer for eligible residents. According to a press release, the benefits will be available for eligible students who attended a West Virginia school that participates in the National School Lunch Program were actively enrolled in the 2022 to 2023 school year and qualify for free or reduced price meals. Hundreds of thousands of Massachusetts families receiving food aid through the SNAP will also get extra payments of at least $38 this week. Days after Governor Mara Healey signed into law's spending bill to create an off-ramp for a now expired federal enhanced to SNAP, the Department of Transitional Assistance announced the first payments will flow on Friday, April 7th. More than 650,000 households are in line for the payments, worth up to 40% of the enhanced federal benefits, with a minimum set at $38. The legislature and Governor Healey agreed to the $130 million plan that will provide heightened monthly SNAP benefits but only for another three months, aiming to prevent Massachusetts families from a sharp and sudden decrease now that the federal expansion has come to an end. Governor Phil Murphy also signed a bill to ensure every SNAP household in New Jersey will receive at least $95 in monthly benefits going forward. If a New Jersey household is approved for less than $95 in monthly SNAP benefits, they will receive their regular federal benefit plus an additional state supplement to bring them to this new minimum. Well, my magnificent and dearest friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this Thursday. Thank you, dear friends, for being part of this community and for joining me here every single day. To say thank you and to show my appreciation, I will be announcing three winners tomorrow for the Walmart gift card giveaway. If you'd like to enter the giveaway, friends, all you have to do is click and like several of my videos and then comment below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you watch and then comment on, the greater your chances, my friends, of winning these giveaways. Thank you and have a wonderful and very blessed week.